In this video, I am going to go over some of the PAT questions from 2015, specifically the ones dealing with circle geometry. So that's going to be questions number eight, 11, and 27. What I suggest you do is to try them on your own first and then come back to the video and follow along and see if you got everything right. Okay, so let's take a look at question number eight here. So a couple things that I noticed is the image does form something that looks reminiscent of a circle or a half circle. We also have a weird bar here, but we'll figure out what that's talking about when we go through the question. And it looks like our job is to figure out the diameter of the arc here, okay? So again, one of the things with circle geometry is we wanna make sure we recognize the difference between a radius and a diameter. If we don't know those terms, we're gonna have trouble solving the question. So let's go ahead and look at the question. The arch in the diagram below forms a complete half circle. The black support beam in the diagram is 3.6 meters in length and three meters above the surface of the water. So I'm going to assume that that's the part, that's the water there. So what we need to do is, for something like this, we're going to need to draw a diagram and we wanna think about how we can move things within the circle in our favor. So how do we move maybe the radius? Because remember the radius is gonna go from the center to the edge of the circle. So we can rotate that really anywhere around the circle. But the, better, the best way to solve the question is to rotate it in a way that works for us. So I'm kind of looking at this and I'm thinking, I'm going to get a little bit of a triangle here and I'll show you how. So if I draw a line between here and here, so to the edge of the circle, to the center, that is gonna be my radius. This right here is my radius. Okay, that's helpful. We do know the length of here, the here. So we know that that's gonna be 3.6 meters. Our radius is, we're not sure about, that's what we're trying to solve. And if we double it, then we're gonna be able to find our diameter. Okay, and then we do also know the length of the support beam to the water is three meters. That means I can draw a line right here to here, and that has to be three meters. Okay, so even though my triangle is upside down, it is a right angle triangle, meaning I can go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem. So I'm actually gonna flip our triangle the other way, if that makes sense, so it's the right way up. Uh, truthfully, it doesn't matter, but I know sometimes it helps to see it like this. So the bottom portion of this is going to be 3.6 divided by two, right? Because the whole beam is 3.6, but we only need half of it to figure out that bottom part of the triangle. So that is only gonna be um, 1.8, and then the height of the triangle, they gave us that value, that's gonna be three meters. Now our job is to figure out the hypotenuse, so the longest side of the triangle, because that's gonna become my radius, and once I double that, I can figure out my diameter. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in everything here. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So my A is going to be three squared, plus b squared, which is 3.6 squared. Now remember, you can interchange those. a and b doesn't matter, you just can't get confused with c. Uh, c is our unknown value. So let's combine those together. That's gonna give me 12.24, which is equal to c squared. I can then take the square root of both, which is the opposite of squaring it, and that's gonna leave me with c is equal to 3.5 meters. Okay. Now here's the thing, I'm sure most of you were tempted to write the answer as A, but remember the question is asking us for the diameter, okay? Not the radius. So what we need to do is take that 3.5 and we need to double it to get our diameter. So when I double it, that's gonna give me seven meters, meaning our diameter is seven meters. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at question number 11 here. So. We've got the fact that the letter W is in the center of the diagram below, and it represents the location of a wireless router for an internet access. Now, a couple of key things to remember or that I'm noticing right away before I continue with the question is that we've got a circle, and then they've told us the room is going to be a square. Um, it says here, the router provides access to the area represented by the dotted circle in the diagram below. Um, another key piece of information is that the circular area has a diameter of 20. 
So when we're thinking of circle geometry, we need to be really clear about what our terms are going to be. So remember radius is anywhere from the edge of the circle to the center of the circle. And then diameter is double the radius. So that's gonna go from one edge of the circle. That's gonna go from one edge of the circle to the other edge of the circle in the center right there. So already I'm looking at the diagram and it does look a little overwhelming. One of the things that I remind students um, about this is to think about where you can draw a radius. So like I said, a radius is anywhere from the edge of the circle to the center. And we know from the question they've told us that W is going to be the center. So what that means is I can draw a radius anywhere between here, 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 and I'm gonna know that measurement. So I know that measurement because the diameter is 20, and that means our radius has to be 10 meters, okay? So what I encourage you to do is to look at the diagram and decide, is there a way I can connect some of the lines that are on here? So the first thing I notice is the distance between here to here, well, we don't actually know that, that's our unknown, but I do know the radius and I can rotate that radius in a way around the circle that's gonna work for me when I'm solving the problem. So in this case, I'm gonna rotate that radius to be right there. That's gonna give me something fun. That's gonna give me a right angle triangle. So again, this is going back to reminding you and assessing you on the stuff that you would have learned in grade eight. If I'm looking at this now, I have a right angle triangle, right? So the edge of the square and X makes the edge of the triangle and our radius makes our hypotenuse or that long uh, flat side of the triangle. So now I can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this is gonna look like. So if you don't remember Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now a and b can be switched interchangeably, but c squared has to always be that longer side of the uh, triangle, the hypotenuse. So now I can kind of plug in my numbers and just solve for it. Okay, so we do know what um, a, a squared is gonna be. That's just gonna be x squared. Now students kind of get confused. Is the length from here to here? Well, that also has to be X, okay? Because we're cutting it, we know it's a square. So we're cutting it kind of into four corners and you're putting in a square within a square. So all the edges must be the same. And I'm actually gonna redraw this hypotenuse to make that really clear for you. Sorry, I should have done a better job on that. But what that means is this length and this length have to be the same. So that means I'm gonna represent a squared with x, but I'm also gonna do the same thing with b. So that's gonna be x squared as well, is equal to c squared. c squared is just our radius, which is gonna be 10 squared. So now, building on grade nine math, we can add these um, x values together. So we can add the polynomials together. So remember, for something to be considered a like term, it has to have the same variable and the same degree or the same exponent. So I've got my same variable, check, I've got my same exponent, check, we're good to go, we can combine those. That's gonna to combine to be two x squared equals 100. And the 100 I'm just getting from 10 times 10 equals 100. All right, so now I just have to solve for this. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is to get x alone. I'm going to, I'm going to divide both sides by two, divide that by two, divide this by two. That gets me x squared is equal to 50. Okay, now I can take the square root of that. Now I can take the square root of that and that's gonna get me X. And of course, unlike part A of the exam with part B, you get your calculator so you can just take the square root of that and that's gonna equal 7.01 meters, okay? So if I'm looking at this, based on the options, we do need to round to the nearest meter, nearest tenth of a meter, excuse me. So the nearest tenth of a meter is going to tell me that, sorry, that's supposed to be a seven there. Uh, the nearest tenth of a meter is gonna tell me the seven is gonna tell the zero to round up, leaving me with X equals 7.1 meters, or the answer, which is A. Okay, let's look at number 27 here. 
So a um, couple of things to notice. The first thing we know is point O is the center of the diagram or of the circle. So that center of the circle is important, but it's also important for a couple of other things. We have two rules of geometry that we're looking at here. So the first rule that we're looking at is this angle here, whatever this angle is, and notice how I'm passing the arrow. That full angle there, if I were to divide that into two or take half of it, that would give me this angle here, which is great because that's what we got to find in this question. We got to figure out what angle X is going to be. However, I am missing this portion of the angle. That's where it gets a little bit tricky. So now I've got to go back and use my rules of triangle. So there's a triangle here. And one thing that we can notice with this triangle is it's going to be an isosceles triangle. So what that means is if we know this angle here and we do, it's 75, that means this angle here must also be 75. So we're gonna put a 75 there. Okay, so that means this is 75 and this is 75. And then the other rule of triangles is all angles in a triangle must add up to 180. So what that means is in order to figure out the angle here, I am going to need to take my 180, which is all the angles inside a triangle, and subtract 75 plus 75. And those 75s are just coming from these portions here that are equal to one another. All right, well, then that's gonna be 180 minus 150. That leaves me with 30 degrees. All right, so that means this angle here, this missing portion here is 30 degrees. So we can combine those together, 94 degrees plus 30 degrees, that's gonna give me 124. All right, so now we know that this portion from here to here is 124. We can divide that in half, or basically divide it by two, sorry. And that's gonna tell me that X is equal to 62 degrees. So the answer for this one here is 62. I really hope that helped. I know circle geometry can be tricky, especially when it's given like this in multiple choice. Uh, just as always, if you all have any questions um, between now and your exam, give me a shout uh, over the comments and I'm gonna do my best to help you out. And just as a reminder, if you need help with math in the future, here's my information below to book a session. Until then, good luck on your exam tomorrow and I'll see you all in the next one.